So, welcome to Wild and Basic Season 3. So, new soundtracks, new covers coming, everything new essentially, and we're doing seasons. So, I'm still figuring out that, but yeah, I just wanted to say hello and welcome to the new video cast version. So, if you are on Spotify and YouTube, you will be able to watch this. But on other platforms, you can easily just listen, so it's totally fine. But um, I'm in the new apartment, so this is going to be like the studio essentially. If you're on YouTube and or video version, you will see this. I'm going to like start decorating it. I'm thinking about like neon sign over here. I don't know. Make some stuff. There's like a bar cart behind it. Maybe I can offer people like some drinks. Yeah, I'm trying to get my guests like drunk. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm working on that, but today's episode is going to be about what is it really like moving to a new city? I do want to talk about like what is it like living in Miami uh, from a New Yorker perspective. That's another story. I feel like I need to like dive in a little more before I give that advice, but I have picked up a few things. What is it really like living in a new city? And um, this kind of applies to like a lot of cities, honestly. It's not like just like one for all. And I feel like this would be very useful to talk about. So before that, let me give you guys a little bit. This is kind of like going to be like an update, but let me guys, let me give you guys a little bit like how it's been. So I officially moved to this apartment like December, I think 19th or something. Like uh, I started, we were doing a road trip. So I got here about like 20th or 21st or something. Uh, then it was like a very, very long drive, honestly. We only stopped once. Well, like stopped, I mean like overnight. A couple times we stopped for drinks and everything. And I expected like it was going to be like, oh my God, fun. <laughs> I don't know, drive. I assure you. Some parts were kind of, oh, I don't know, like honestly, like what to say it in a way that like, it, there is nothing else, nothing to see. You're not going to see that scenic drive. It's not Pacific Highway in California. It really is not. But it is, it's an okay drive, you know. And I also did some of it like at night, so it was not bad at all. So I would recommend. Uh, on that afterwards, the biggest challenge for me in this apartment was that like, because this is my first apartment and I never had my own furniture before. I mean, I had a few things, but never had like my own things, like that big things. Like a couple things, you know, like my Roomba, I don't know, my TV, like those kind of things, but not like a couch or I, I don't know, like a, even my, like I had a bed, yeah, but I left it in New York. I got another one. Like there's a few things I did not have. So it took like, a while, <laughs> truly a while, to uh, get all these things together. So like first couple of weeks, <laughs> it was like, there's no couch here, there was nothing here. Even like there's still a few things missing. You guys see the walls are empty. So yeah, I'm still like working on that, but it's essentially been a process and here we are. I'm very excited, honestly, for this journey to see how it's going to be uh, working out. Also, if you guys want to see like my apartment hunting and also this empty apartment tour, I did post them on my vlog channel, Merce Vlogs, so you can definitely check them out. I will link it in the in the video description, but you guys can also just Google it on YouTube. Uh, you can find it if you're on other podcast platforms. But let's get started on what is it really like moving to a new city. So the first thing I would say, and I feel like this is just like kind of given, doesn't matter um, what kind of person you are. This only applies though if you don't know anyone in the city. I only knew like one or two person and that wasn't like the people my age, that was like my dad's age. So it was like, I don't know if I should even count that honestly. So. I would say it does feel lonely at first. Like this is at first, it's just because like you don't know people. And I have to be honest, I actually like don't necessarily have a problem with that because it's just like, it's a fresh start. It is something you're just starting out. You're figuring things out. You're trying to find your crowd. You're trying to understand uh, 
what is happening around you. You're trying to see like, is this the place you want to go for? Like, is this the supermarket you want to go for? Is this like where you want to go for workout? Like, is this what do you want to do? Like, it's like those places, you know, you're figuring things out. So it's, uh, it's a process. And you're not gonna like make friends right away. And also one thing I would say is that like, yes, you should make friends, you should connect with people, but also you don't have to be like super desperate about it because not not everyone you meet is going to be in your circle and not everyone you meet is like has best intentions. So you have to be careful with that because sometimes I don't think desperation ever brings anything good. I have to be honest. Like, at least from my experience, I don't think being desperate ever just like, oh my god, like, brings something so good. It's always like, desperation equals to bad mistakes. Equals to mistakes. I'm being serious. Legit, it's equal to mistakes. Like, it's not gonna be, um, it's not gonna be good. So, I would avoid that. Yes, we want, you want to make friends, you want to meet people, but just take your time. And I'm gonna give you guys a few tips uh, in the next bullet points. You just have to like put yourself out there. You know, you have to explore places, figure out what you wanna do. And also don't say that like, um, just like, you know, put yourself every place, like go to this place, this place, that place, like no. Because you have to also consider like, this is what I learned. <laughs> this is not finance <laughs> podcast. But moving is extremely costly. Like I knew this was gonna be costly, just did not realize how expensive it was going to be. Because even if you have like your own furniture and you're not buying anything, you're gonna be paying for the company to bring it down here or where we are moving to, right? Like so regardless, it's gonna cost money. So I'm just saying relocating is expensive. Like it can be a lot. So you won't be able to like do everything you wanted within the first months that you're moving because sometimes you can't be going out to bars, you can't be eating out all the time. You have to like budget. Even if you are like comfortable with your money, you still need to like take into consideration like, how much money you're spending. Because I remember my first months here, because it just passed, I mean it was in January, end of January, uh, I was like, oh my God, how much money did I spend? Like. I was like, this is insane. I don't want to look at my card statement. But I'm just saying, like, uh, just be, like, cautious with that. Because don't worry, like, as long as you are putting yourself out there, people are going to, like, find you and you're going to find your people. So just, like, be open about it. Because there is, it's so interesting that, like, there were times that I, I wasn't even, like, trying to talk to anyone. It just, like, it just happened. Uh, it's the way it works out sometimes like I feel like sometimes you're on the street or sometimes you're just like I don't know walking there there are times that people talk to you like it's so interesting how that might work out sometimes I know that when you say it like this it sounds a bit strange but I'm telling you it happens like there are times that like I was um, like at the grocery store I think Someone was like, oh, do you know about this brand? Is this good? I was like, yeah, like, I, I think I have tried this one. It's like, super random, right? But I'm just telling you, it's so interesting. I have heard from other people that, like, they met their boyfriend or they met their friend at a grocery store or this place. So I'm saying, like, you never know who you're going to meet. So keep your, as long as I feel like you have, like, a, uh, like, a, you have, like, an open mind. Like, keep your, keep yourself open. Be like, just be open about it, like open to meeting new people. And here are the ways that I'm gonna tell you how you can meet people. First, if you are religious, again, if you are, you don't have to do this. If you are a religious person, or you are believing God and everything, and nothing wrong with that, you know, you should join a church. There is a church next to me, actually, I consider joining, I just not one of those Christians or people, honestly, nothing wrong with that again, because don't come for me. <laughs> Just saying that, like, I, I'm one of those people who would go to church maybe for the holidays, Easter, Christmas, like, again, holidays. I wouldn't go, like, on a regular basis, but my sister would. So I'm like, if you're that kind of person, you should join a church, because my sister definitely met people through church, and they're, they're 
like she has met like pretty good people like i'm just saying like you never know who you might meet so church is definitely a great place to meet and but if you're not that kind of person just ignore this step next one would be definitely joining a gym it doesn't have to be expensive gym whatever you can afford whatever is in your budget so I joined this gym, well, I had this, it's the same gym that I have been going in New York, it's Equinox, but I started taking classes here and I met people that are there. So I actually, couple, uh, my, one of my neighbors is taking most of the class there, so it's kind of worked out because she, he also lives in my building, so we're taking classes together. So like, it's very interesting how it worked out. So I'm saying like, you would be surprised how many people you can meet. And I remember this even from New York, when I moved back to New York after college, and I didn't know many people and at that time I was a part of like New York sports club and I was taking these dance classes uh, at New York sports club and it was really cool like because I met a couple of people from there and I think a couple of them I think we are still like friends I want to say like close friends but we're friends I mean I met people through there again don't always think that like people you're meeting and you're being like connected and, it's gonna be in your life forever. It's just like everyone has time because you have to remember you are your own character, like main character, and this is your story. So you get to decide who you want to keep in your story. So that's all I think about. So I'm like, yes, you met someone, you learned something from it or didn't, but just will happen, you know? Like they don't have to stay in your life. But I'm just saying, it's a good way to meet people. Another option is, this is kind of controversial for some people, but I'm gonna say it actually works. You should be on the apps. Even if you're not looking to like date at the moment, definitely consider like being on the dating apps. Because what I experienced so far, I mean, I'm only like on one app, that you can meet people that you might not necessarily be attracted to, but you could end up being friends. I didn't think of that in the beginning because New York, it has the different vibe of it. I feel like it's more like hit and quit vibe. It's definitely hookups more than friends. But Miami is a different story. So, and I'm sure like there are other cities that are kind of like that too. That's the same thing I felt in LA too. Like you can definitely meet people and be friends with them. Because that's what happened to me in LA too. Like I was only there like I think three weeks and I was on the apps and like I met a couple people and we ended up being friends. Like nothing else happened but I was good to like, oh, I'm like okay that's good. You don't necessarily have that mindset. I mean some people don't have that mindset when they're on dating apps but you never know. So I'm just saying like just being on the apps sometimes opens that possibility and I would definitely recommend it honestly. Next thing I would recommend is joining sports. This is again, like, it's up to some people. If you're not into that, it's totally fine. Some people are in, into being a part of a team. Like I always love being a part of a team, like in college, high school, like I was always a part of something and I love that aspect of it, of my life. I like being part of something, I don't know. Not like a cult, <laughs> the way I'm saying it, it sounds like a cult. Not like that, just like it feels nice, I would say that. Uh, so definitely consider that, like you can be a part of like some soccer team, volleyball team, I don't know, like whatever the teams that's out there. Or, or again this costs money but you can cut it out later too, depends on your budget. You can be a part of a club, like tennis club or I don't know, there are so many other clubs honestly, like a golf club. like. You can really meet cool people at these clubs. You'll be surprised. That's what I'm saying. I feel like, yes, sometimes you're like, oh my god, it's kind of a waste of money or whatever. You have to think about your future and think about who you want to meet and what kind of people you are you want to be associated with. Like, it's going to be worth it. Because one thing I learned, maybe this applies to just business, but I feel like it also applies to relationships too, or life. You have to invest. And the same thing applies in here. Like if you invest in yourself or invest in this kind of things, it will pay off. 
your relationship will happen, like the relationships will occur or you will develop some sort of relationship with people or you will meet people. You're essentially investing it. You're essentially like buying into it. It might not pay off. It's possible. I mean, it's risky. Investment is risky. So, but that's kind of what it is. You are investing in yourself. You're investing in your future. So you have to try it and see how it works out. And lastly, this is, um, this is also hit or miss, honestly, but it's also good to have a good time. Go out. Go out to clubs or bars, restaurants. Well, not some bars. Okay. In, <laughs> scratch that. <laughs> bars or clubs. Like, it's good to go out because, you know, it's good to have a good time sometimes. You know, you need that. You need to get that out of your system. Great. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> but also, you can meet some people too because you have to remember, yes, sometimes we tell ourselves that like, oh my god, what kind of like responsible person goes out or whatever. Actually, a lot of people, you'd be surprised. Like there are, yes, there are responsible people who don't go out all the time, uh, but there are also people who goes out all the time and like they have like no job or anything, steady job. But I'm just saying, like there are definitely people who goes out all the, like all the time, but you will see who you can meet. But I'm just saying like you can definitely meet like cool people like the people you want to be associated with. So definitely be careful the crowd that you want to be associated with, but you can definitely meet people. So I would say keep your options open, like 100% open. Another thing I would say is to just like taking it all in, you know, because you're in this new phase of your life and you don't know what's going on, you don't know what's going to happen yet, don't like throw your opinions and don't like start judging and immediately be like, I don't like this person. I don't see this. I don't like this anymore, whatever. Because we are already, we are automatically going to make assumptions because of uh, where we have lived before. Like in my case, it's like New York and like Miami, like it's a different story, right? So definitely keep your options open. Like keep your, I feel like the best way to say it is like, don't judge your don't judge it yet because you don't know enough about this new place. I know I feel like as a human being, we are like this kind of people that like we are like, oh my god, like I don't like this place and like I don't like this animal or like whatever. But just because like you just got here, you don't know enough about this place, obviously you're going to have your own opinion, own thoughts about this place, but you don't know enough about it to judge it. Like you just don't, you know, like just give yourself some time to process and understand what's going on. Listen to people, listen what people say. You're gonna meet a lot of people when you first move to a new place. So listen what they say. Listen um, their advice, listen what they say about this place, that, that. Um, you don't have to do, you don't have to do exactly what they say because you know, you're an adult, you can make your own choices, but there might be some truth to it, so definitely just take it, take everything with a grain of salt. That's what I think about with every single advice that I ever get. Yes, people might be influential, they might know more than me, but I feel like at the end of the day, you sometimes also want to make your own decisions. So like, whatever they might be saying, it's like you're like, I still want to do what I want to do, and that's totally okay. Like, I feel like it is okay to make mistakes, it's okay to do what you want to do, you are not someone's puppet to just do exactly what they say that you should do. So it's okay. But I just would say like in the beginning stage, just like take it all in. Listen, listen. I feel like listening is huge. Sometimes I feel like people don't listen. Like this is what I do nowadays. I'm just like, yeah, I don't know this place. I don't know that because the people are like, have you been here? Have you been there? I'm like super honest. I'm like, no, I haven't. Like tell me all about it. Like what is this like? What is it like? It's cool, like, maybe I am annoying, <laughs> maybe I ask too many questions. Sometimes I just like ask, but sometimes I'm just like, yes, I'm curious, like tell me all about it. Like if you want to tell me, it's cool. If you don't want to tell me, it's also cool. But just like tell me, I, I would listen because I am in that phase because like I truly just don't know. Like I have visited Miami many times, but again, being a visitor is such a different experience than actually living. So just saying that. And I feel like that kind of concludes what I wanted to say here. 
this is so far what I have gathered and I also want to make these episodes kind of short because with the guests it's definitely going to be a lot longer and I'm also trying to balance it out to see how long I want to make these episodes because I think max with the guests I'm also going to make it 30, 30 minutes max then I will also make like maybe two parts we shall see but this solo episode I'm going to keep it 20-25 minutes or even sometimes under 20 minutes so this is kind of wrapping it up right under 20 right 20 something so that's actually perfect but I just hope some of these were useful tips for anyone who wants to move to a new city because I know not just me a lot of people have been moving to new places Miami South Carolina Denver people moving from New York to California people moving from California to New York like Everyone has been moving, so I feel like this is a very relatable topic to talk about and I hope some of these tips would be helpful for anyone who's going through the same process. So um, I hope you guys like this episode. If you do, please don't forget to subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen or watch this podcast and I'll see you guys next week with another episode. Bye guys.